Today, on an all-new Dr. Phil, both of these women... You made a choice between having this child and keeping your boyfriend. ...have a secret regret. I regret that you're my dad. She never knew her father. Are you sorry she contacted you? I knew the day was going to come. Now, all her questions... Why in 20 years have you not reached out to her? ...will be answered. You have said, I truly believe that Kelsey isn't mine. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. If it matters to you, that's what I want to talk about. Are you ready to move? Let's do it. Go, Dr. Phil. Thank you, Dr. Phil. you a question is there one thing in your life think about this one thing in your life that you wish you could do over one thing that would change the course of your life is there a decision you made that haunts you even years later well today we're talking about those mistakes that are deep dark and sometimes terrifying here's what some people have confessed on a new website called secret regrets my biggest regret is that I ever started cheating on my husband. Every time I do it, I say it's the last time, but it never is. I regret wishing you were dead and feeling disappointed when you came home alive. I regret never telling anyone about the molestation. I know I was a kid, but telling anyone, someone, would have saved me a lot of heartache. I regret losing my virginity in a car in an empty parking lot. Happy birthday, Will. I regret every day that no one knows he is your son. I regret that another man is raising him as his own. I will forever regret leaving you early that night because you might still be here if I had stayed. I regret not shooting you instead of divorcing you and letting you use my kids as pawns in your custody war. I regret. I regret. I regret. I will forever regret my actions. Kevin Hansen wrote a book and created a website, Secret Regrets, to give people a safe place to unburden themselves. Now today, some of the people who posted on the site decided that even though they had done it anonymously, that they wanted to come forward to get my help. Take a look at our first story. I regret being your daughter. I regret that you are my biological dad. You are rude, hurtful, confusing, and selfish. I secretly regret ever contacting my biological father. He has hurt me in more ways than anybody ever has. Brian left when I was about six months old. Two years ago when I was 17, I decided to contact Brian, and my mom agreed. We looked on the internet, found his address. I sent him a letter, and I summed up the last 17 years of my life. He wrote back in a quick amount of time, and he agreed that we should get to know each other, but it turns out that wasn't the best idea. When I first contacted Brian, it was a positive relationship, and then it just started going downhill. He doesn't send me birthday cards. He forgets my birthday, so he doesn't call me. When it came to my high school graduation, he didn't send me a graduation card. He didn't text me or call me and say congratulations, and that was a huge letdown. He doesn't follow through with anything that he says with me. He said he would get a plane ticket for me to come and see him, and I never received a plane ticket. It was just another letdown. In one email, he he wrote to me, well, there's a possibility that you're not my daughter. That really, really hurt. I don't know why he would say that. It just makes me feel like worthless to him. I'm just really disappointed that he can't be a man and act like a dad. Wow, that's a lot to say. So let me be sure I understand your regret. You regret that you reached out to him, or you regret that he's your father, or both, or you regret how he responded and violated your expectations? What, what is it that you regret the most? I regret everything, ever like him being my dad. He has never been there for me. He has never tried to communicate with me. He just doesn't care. Are you angry? I'm so angry, but I'm more hurt with all the things that he said. Yeah, what has he said that hurt you the most? He said, there's a possibility that you're not my daughter. Do you think he said that almost as a hope that it's not true, or, or I what? honestly don't know. I just think he doesn't want anything to do with me. 
Why would that be the case? Are you, are, have you turned out to be a bad person? No. Are you a troublemaker? Are you intruding on his life? What, what is it that would cause someone to say, I've, I hope you're not my daughter, or imply that and not want you around? I just think he regrets all the mistakes he made in the past by leaving my mom and I, and he's not ready to accept the responsibility. Mm -hmm. What did you want when you reached out to him? What I did just, you want to happen? Play, play out the good script for me. Right. I wanted just to know him. I wanted to know if I looked like him. I wanted to know how we were alike, like if we had the same interests and stuff. And why did that matter to you? I'm not saying it shouldn't. I'm just right. curious why you think it matters. Um, just because, like, I have his blood. I'm his biological daughter. So you say this has affected the way you trust other people. Mm -hmm. Talk about that. Um, he <clears throat> likes to mess with my brain. When he didn't send me a birthday card two years in a row, he didn't send me my graduation card, that really let me down and that made me not want to trust people anymore because... And this is after you've contacted him, you, mm -hmm. you've made the contact, he knows you're there, he, yeah. you're on the radar, Yeah. and he says he's going to send you something. Right. And he doesn't. He doesn't, no. Why not? Why do you think he, that would happen? Because you don't just forget that. I mean, come yeah. on. Somebody comes after all these years. Did he do it on purpose? And if so, why tell you he's going to do it to begin with? I don't know. I don't know why he wouldn't. It's just a card. Like, all you have to say is, happy birthday. That's all you have to do. And it's just a thought that counts. And he didn't even put the effort in to try. Do you want, did you reach out to him because you want money from him? No. You think he owes you something? No, I just wanted a relationship. Tell me about the contact with him to begin with. What did you, what was said? Um, all I said was, hey, I'm pretty much your long lost daughter, Kelsey. Um, I kind of summed up the past 17 years of my life for him. And so he could get to know me. And at the end, I was like, I'd appreciate it if you wrote back, if you want to keep forming a relationship with me, and if not, I understand. And he said? He's like, yeah, that'd be great to get to know you. He wasn't, like, hesitant at all. But you didn't ask for anything. So I there's nothing, he's anything. not afraid of being exploited. You didn't tell him, I think you're a horrible person for abandoning me. I, I want money, nothing. Nothing. Do you want a relationship with him? That's tough. At the beginning, I did, but now I feel like I've done everything I can, and this is my last straw. What do you want today? I just want to figure out our communication problems between each other. Um, I know I probably have some part in this. I'm not blaming it all on him. I just want, I just want him to be there for me. Well, Brian is here today. Uh, when we come back, they're going to meet for the first time. I lost complete contact with Kelsey at the age of nine months old. Kelsey has never told me what she wants from me. She wants to get to know her biological father, as she says. It's pretty straightforward that she wants something, but I can never get it out of her. Monday on an all-new Dr. Phil. He was the biggest bully on Big Brother. If you were to get in my face right now, I would get in your face too. He calls herself the Tasmanian Devil. Do you think you have a rage problem? I know I have a rage problem. He's broken 28 phones in anger. I am mad at the world. Why do you do it to me? Is there something in their DNA? We tested each of you for the warrior genes. That causes them to rage? And the results are in. That's Monday. I regret that I keep trying to stay in touch with you. I regret that I believe this could work out between us. All I wanted was to know my biological dad and how I was like you. I regret being your daughter. I have always wondered why you never tried to contact me. I am your first child. Am I not good enough for you? I pray that one day you will change and realize all the heartache you put me through. Well, that's Kelsey reading from her posting on secretregrets.com. Now, Kelsey contacted her biological father, Brian, two years ago, and he's here today. Uh, before we bring him out, I'm going to ask you a couple questions. Now, you've not seen him since 1991. Right. And you were like nine months old. Yeah. Before we bring him out, I, I want you to hear what he's had to say about this. Take a look. I lost 
complete contact with Kelsey at the age of nine months old. She wants to get to know her biological father, as she says. She wants to have some type of relationship. It's pretty straightforward that she wants something, but I can never get it out of her. She started getting upset because I wasn't recognizing her birthday. I wasn't recognizing that she graduated. I didn't send her a, a Christmas card. I don't have the dates embedded in my mind for 18 years. As significant as they may be to her, they're insignificant dates to me. Kelsey has never told me what she wants from me. And her expectations have never been set to me. I would hope that she would be pretty straightforward with me and telling me what I should expect to give her so that I can try to make that happen for her if it's something that I can give. What do you think about what he said? I don't know. Um, I do understand what he said. I don't think... Like, I've told him I want a relationship, but I don't think he has ever fully heard me say that. Did you listen to everything he said? Mm-hmm. It bothered me that he said those dates aren't important. Like, my birthday's not important. You understand, he, he doesn't really know you. Right. Are you ready to meet him? Yeah, I think so. Okay, Brian? Come on out and meet Kelsey for the first time in nearly 20 years. Listen, the only way that this is going to come to any kind of a good conclusion, any kind of a good outcome, is if you just put everything out there honestly and openly. We just really need to be honest. Are you sorry she contacted you? Would it have Absolutely life been simpler not. if she had not? Absolutely not. I knew the day was going to come. She describes herself as being really hurt by your response, that you really haven't plugged in, you haven't met any even low expectations about what you hoped would happen, right? right. Um, well, and I'll, I'll have to be honest with that. I mean, that's a two-way street. Uh, there's times that I'll, I'll text her because of uncomfortability of talking on the phone. Um, I'm not really one to sit down and write a letter. I'd rather shoot off emails, mm -hmm. asking for email addresses, etc., to try and correspond with her. Um, that was never given early on. Uh, well, as a, as a father, let me just step out and just talk to you, just dad to dad here for a minute. Why in 20 years have you not reached out to her? Why was it her job to find you? I knew that they, when they left South Carolina, they moved to Tennessee. And then I didn't know where they moved from there. Could you have found her if you wanted to? I'm, I'm sure I could have, yes. Okay, and, and that's my question, just dad to dad. If I knew that I had a child out there somewhere, I think I haven't been in your situation, so I, I, I can't say with certainty, but I would think I would want to find her and see who she was and how she was and what was going on. And, and if I brought her into this world, if she was my child, did I, was there something I could do or should do? I would, I would want to find her selfishly. I mean, there'd be a, a hundred reasons that I would want to find her and none of them motivated you to reach out. You've wondered that, right? I'm just asking you questions I know are on her mind. I never reached out, no. Um, was she on my mind? Yeah, she was on my mind. Um, could I have done things differently? Yes. Um, there's a lot of factors into it from the past between her mother and I that were kind of, were kind of made me hesitant. Even on the last contact, when I signed over adoption for Kelsey, um, looking at it as a view from Kelsey's view later in life, would it be better to sign over the adoption, give her the same name as the family? Um, so there's a lot of factors with that. Mm -hmm. And the last thing I told her mother at that point was, this is one thing you're going to have to answer to. Um, as a matter of fact, when I signed over adoption, I was getting ready to fly back to the Midwest 
and I asked to meet her. And at that age, she was about four. Mm -hmm. And uh, he, at, my, at my expense, to where I'd meet him halfway, and we'd sit down for breakfast, didn't have to introduce me as anybody but a friend, just to kind of see her. And I was flat told no. You have said, and I assume you, you know this, uh, I wrote it down in a quote, I truly believe that Kelsey isn't mine because of the circumstance of relationship at the yeah, time. Yeah, but that doesn't matter. And the, the but you've done the math that, and you don't think she's yours. Right, and that, the rest of that statement is it doesn't matter. Why does it not matter? It doesn't matter. I have already chose what I, I plan on giving to Kelsey to what she... What I feel I should give to her. Which is, what do you mean? What she's asking for. It, do, it doesn't matter if she's my child or not. It's irrelevant to me. But that still hurts that you said that. Well, that really there's, a there's a possibility that you're not. Well, Kelsey wants, you do want to know, right? I, yeah. You, you do want to know. And she asked us to do a DNA test to put this to rest once and for all. Now, I've not read the results, but I, I'm going to. We're going to find out if Kelsey is really Brian's biological daughter, and if so, where do we go from there? We'll be right back. In the past, Brian has stated that I might not be his actual daughter, but I don't believe that. Today, I want to take a DNA test to prove to him that I'm his daughter. There are four swaps. We will be taking two samples from each cheek inside. Okay. Open wide for me, please. Just relax. I'm 100% sure that these results are going to come back positive that Brian is my father. with Brian and Kelsey. Kelsey went on a website, secretregrets.com, and said that you had a lot of regrets about ever reaching out uh, to this man. Uh, Brian has told Kelsey that she may not even be his child. He said it doesn't really matter to him. Um, so Kelsey asked that we do a DNA test, and I have the results here from DDC, one of the top DNA laboratories in the world. Now, I'm curious before I open this, because you said that your only reservation about doing this is that, you know, A, you don't think you're a father, and B, what impact it would have on her when she finds that out. You don't want her to be hurt yeah. by finding have, out you're not the father. Right, I have said that. Um, and I'm, I'm worried if you are concerned about her, I, I do this for a living, and I got to tell you, you seem very cold and detached from her. That's just, that's just my reaction. I'm not saying that's how you feel. I'm telling you that's how it seems. Is that, does it seem that way to you? Yeah. Um, is that the way you feel, no. or do you just come across differently? No, I think that's probably the way I'm coming across, but no, that's not the way I feel at all. Because you, you seem almost irritated by the whole thing. No. I'm just trying to process what's being said. Yeah. Yeah, well, you've had time to process before you got here, and you felt that way then, too, right? Mm hmm Because I, you thought you at least deserved a birthday card or a graduation note or something like right. that. And your response was, hey, it's not burned in my memory like it is her. Well, you know, you know write it down. I mean, if it, it hurt her, and I guess my question is, does it matter to you that it matters to her? Yeah, it does matter. It does matter to me that it matters to her, but it's a culture that I'm going to have to kind of breed in. It's something that I'm going to have to start recognizing and et cetera. I mean, it's... It's not there right now, just the lack of distance, the, 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 simply the distance. Yeah. It, you say the feelings aren't there? No, 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 the feelings are, I believe the feelings are there. Okay, so you do feel warmly towards right, her? Right, right. Okay. The DNA results are in. What do you think about this? 
This sounds so selfish, but I'm, I just wanted to do it to rub it in your face because you hurt me so bad. The DNA results are in, and it says that the probability that he is your biological father is beyond 99.99%. This is your biological father. Um, probability of paternity, I mean, yeah. nothing's ever 100%, it's 99.99%. How, how do you feel about that? I'm fine with it. I'm fine, I'm totally fine with it. It was never about a DNA test. What do you think about this? I'm glad it's positive. I always knew it was, and I, this sounds so selfish, but I'm, I just wanted to do it to rub it in your face because you hurt me so bad. What do you mean, rub it in his face? That I'm his daughter. Like, that hurt me so bad when he sent me that email that said, there's a chance that you're not my daughter. And, like, just to do that, like, I feel great. You said to us, I truly believe that Kelsey isn't mine, and went on and said, doesn't matter, but I truly believe she isn't. And then you find out she is, and your response is, well, I'm fine with it. It's okay. <laughs> that, 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 there's just a huge disconnect here. I'm not, I'm not trying to throw you under the bus, but I'm trying to label for you like what's normal responsivity and what's cold and detached responsivity. That seems cold and detached, and if, you're, if that's not how you're feeling inside, well, I how mean, are you feeling inside? I, I guess what, what is a proper display? I mean, everybody has a, a way of reaction to things. And am I glad the test was done? It, it, it doesn't matter to me. It, it ever was from the day that she was born to, to where we're at today. Do you see her mother when you look at her? Yeah, absolutely. Does, does that cause you to have just a... A, a involuntary, visceral it, it reaction? May, it may, it may. Does this create a problem for you with your family? Absolutely not. Because you said this is the culture I'm in and folding her into that, it, it is, a, it is a change, it's a challenge. It, it, I guess the introduction is kind of uneasy. Um, bringing the family and her together, I think that there's my, I know certainly my current wife now has had some reservations of how she's being viewed in this when she's done nothing but accept it. Well, Brian's wife, Lee, is here today, right? Hi, how are you? Hi, good, and yourself? Um, are you surprised, happy, sad, relieved, and indifferent? Do, do you have a reaction to the fact that she is, in fact, his I, bio daughter? Everything's pretty much indifferent on the aspect that, Kelsey, he's told me about you from the time that we met. He told me that one day you would probably come around. He didn't want to put you in that uncomfortable predicament because he didn't know what your mom had told you. Our daughters know about you. They're excited. I'm excited. I'm glad to finally meet you. You're part of our family already. You were before the DNA test there. So you really were. That's nice to hear. I, I will tell you this about him. He's really bad about talking how he feels. <laughs> It's been 10 years of marriage, and he, he's, he's starting to get over the hump a little bit. So don't take the closure as personal. He, he just doesn't know how to do it. So he's not real expressive. No, he's not real expressive. What did you want to say? I just said that's really nice to hear, like, from her, because I have never met her before. I don't know much about you. Um, this just says a lot on your part for saying that. <laughs> Um, Thank you. Let me, oh, let, let me say something to you, and, and, and you as well, that you can take away from this. You do need to hear feedback that you may be feeling A and communicating Z. Mm -hmm. Not feeling A and communicating B, but A and Z, widely disparate. Because I believe you, I, I'm not a real expressive guy, so I kind of get that, you know, but I think I'm more expressive than maybe you are. But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Um, but I, I think you need to be aware that y you might come across really differently than, than what you intend, which can have a negative impact on other people. Mm -hmm. So hear that 
piece of feedback. And let me say to the two of you, relationships are not biologically defined. I mean, clearly you have ties, you have some of the same DNA, you have, have some of the same traits and characteristics that are genetically defined. But relationships are built. I've had many, many family members come together as adults that never got to see each other before, and they really have to start and, and forge a relationship. They have to create a history upon which that relationship is built. Get together, spend some time, question each other, observe each other, build some history. It's not just automatic because you're biologically tied. And I think you think that's what's expected here. Well, because she's mine, I'm supposed to have this, this, this kind of ingrained history, and you don't, but you, you have to build it, and it's never, ever too late. It's never too late. You have so much of your life stretched out ahead of you at this point. You have an opportunity to be part of that, but you have to be willing to invest the energy. Do you want to do that? I do, yeah, 100%. Do. Yeah. So that would erase the anger, the resentment, the sorrow, the regret that you, yeah. that you wrote about if you, if you built a relationship. Yeah, I think our problem was that we rushed into it too fast. Uh -huh. I think we, I don't know, but it just went boom, 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 way too fast. Well, yeah, over the last three years. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's not the time, it's what you do with the time, is what I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. So you need to work at this, and you're willing to work at it, right? Oh, yeah. And, oh, and yeah, you support absolutely. that. You, you want him to have that, right? Okay. Will you keep us posted? I'll keep you posted. All right. Thank you so much. All right, go to drphil.com right now and get more information on reuniting with a lost relative. It does work at times. Up next, a very controversial decision leads to another secret regret one that many of you may have been faced with as well. Find out what that's about when we come back. I haven't been able to put my regret behind me necessarily. I still think about it every single day. A lot of people told me they had gone through it and that it gets easier with time. It wasn't the right decision for me. And to this day, I still cannot get over that. Secret regrets. Look, we all have them. Things we wish we had a second chance to go back and do differently. Now, my next guest, secret regret, is one that many of you may relate to. Take a look. My name's Jamie. I'm 21. And my secret regret is that I had an abortion when I was 20 years old. I'm 21 now. It's been a year since I had my abortion. I was with a guy for about eight months, and I had gotten pregnant. I didn't want to have the abortion at all. I should have listened to what I wanted, not what he wanted. He promised that we'd be okay, that we'd work things out, and he was sleeping with like four of the girls throughout the entire relationship too. So, I mean, the day before I had the abortion, he was sleeping at some other girl's house. I've been able to not get over it, but somewhat cope with what I did. I haven't been able to put my regret behind me necessarily. Um, I still think about it every single day, but it has gotten easier as the days go by. It wasn't the right decision for me. And to this day, I still cannot get over that. If I could take it back, I would. I mean, I, let's just deal with reality and get right straight to it. You cannot undo that decision. You, you, you get that. No matter how much you wish you had a second chance to do that, that, that is an event that has happened. You, you can't undo it. It was an extremely confusing time for you, right? Mm hmm Yeah. I mean, you were pregnant. You were in the middle of a breakup. We were uh, together while I was, but he wasn't all there. It was, I felt like I had no one to turn to at all. And whose decision was it? I mean, in the end, it was mine. I still had to consciously make the decision to do it, but I was scared that, that he would leave me. So you did it to hang on to him, in part? In a sense, yeah. Okay, and the day you, you, you had the procedure done, he showed up? Yeah, hung over and fell asleep in the clinic office. He shows up, hung over, and falls asleep in the clinic office. Mm -hmm. And where is he now? Doing his own thing. We He's don't gone. talk. We don't talk. So you have no relationship? No. So he left anyway? So you felt really what? I felt like I lost a child that I did want. And then, you know, I thought things were going to get better. And then I lose him a month and a half later. Just my whole world 
just fell apart right before me. I didn't know what to do. It's been a long year and a half. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, here's what we know. We know that you made a choice between having this child and keeping your boyfriend. And you decided to do what you thought would keep your boyfriend. And that didn't work out. And, and I'm not really here to discuss your decision. Right. You made it. And, and I hope you forgive yourself if, if you need to. I hope you really think about that. I hope you give yourself that freedom to do better in the future. You get that that was a very immature and naive decision, right? You, you say that you still miss him. Well, let me... I don't know what it is. I don't know why. He treated me. I feel like I shouldn't, but and well, I have a wonderful guy now too. I just. But yet, this guy stands between you still and that person. Yeah, and in, I don't want mind. him to. And I don't want him to. Okay. Well, he, here's his resume. He, he he got you pregnant, influenced you to terminate the pregnancy. Showed up hungover, falls asleep, and in the midst of all this, he cheated on you. That that's the resume of the guy that you just really miss. Yeah. So much that it interferes with your current relationship. It's hard to trust anybody. A guy, like, especially with the guy I'm with. He's been doing such a good job at being there, but the past guy has just made it so hard. And you want to know what I think needs to happen here to get past this, to move on? Boy, am I chomping at the bit to tell you. <laughs> I'd rather you be honest. <laughs> oh, I'm going to be honest right after the break. <laughs> well, I'm here with Jamie, and we're talking about secret regrets. For her, the secret regret was choosing to terminate a pregnancy in an effort to maintain what turned out to be an ill-fated relationship. He left anyway. Y you want me to be honest with you, right? You know, first off, let's just talk about him for a minute, okay? Okay. You're not mourning the loss of this guy. You're mourning the loss of who you wish this guy had been. Okay, now think about that. We, we have these images. I see it all the time. Sometimes people get divorced, and they get away from each other. And then they get away and they start missing the other person because they have selective memories. They think about the good times and how much fun it was on the honeymoon and that time that they were down in Cabo and all of this stuff and all that. And so they kind of drift back together. And about two days into the reuniting, they go, oh, yeah, I remember why I hate everything you stand for. I just forgot about that when you weren't there to remind me every minute of every day. Okay, and that's kind of what's going on here, okay? You're, you, you kind of think back to who you wish this guy was, the selective memory, and that's part of the immaturity that's infecting your problem-solving skills here, okay? It, it, it's time, really, that you, that you grow up and dial a intellect up with the emotion. Those things come together. You made a very immature decision. And as I say, I'm not here to discuss your decision or your right to make it. I'm here to discuss your problem-solving skills, which were poor. You chose, listen, did you have warning signs that this guy was not good? I didn't see that. I look back and I see it. That's what I mean. Yeah. There, as you look back, you had to be pretty biased to not see it, right? He cheated on you. 
He didn't have your best interest at heart. And when it comes time for what is probably the most traumatic decision and, and action of your life, he shows up hungover and falls asleep. I mean, he wasn't like pacing the floor. He wasn't in there with you holding your hand. He wasn't thinking about it, praying about it, talking about it. Okay, I mean, these are clues. <laughs> these are clues, okay? And so now you're saying, oh my God, I, I can't believe I did that, but you did. You did the best you could at the time, but you're smarter than that now. You, you get it now. You look back and see that now. And I don't know whether this, this guy that you're with now is a good person or a bad person. I don't know if, if you should make that relationship work or not. I don't, I don't know. But I can tell you letting this person interfere with that is immature. It's unhealthy. You need to be honest with yourself about who this person is and who they are not. Mm -hmm. And I haven't met him, so I'm not talking about anybody in particular. I'm just saying, based on what you're telling me about this person's actions, it speaks volumes to me about who he is not. And you need to accept that you just simply were deceived. And you have your entire life ahead of you. And, and you, you need to do whatever you need to do to get over what I call unfinished emotional business. You have unfinished emotional business with yourself because you have real moral dilemma about what you did. Yeah. You have unfinished emotional business with this guy because you want closure. You, you, you want him to say, I was wrong to influence you in that way. I, 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 I want, I, I, you want something from him. What is it? I just want a sincere apology. I'm sorry that I, he didn't make me do anything. Like I said, I was still a conscious part in making that decision, but I'm sorry I made you feel like you had no other choice in the matter. I'm sorry for putting <clears throat> you through all of that hurt and not being there for you. I didn't care if he was in a relationship with me or not afterwards. I just wanted that emotional support from him. In order for him to give you a sincere apology, he would have to be sincerely sorry. And based on what you're telling me, I'm doubting that that's the case. You say, I wish he had been there for me at the time. You can't change that, but what you can do is be there for yourself now. You can be there for yourself now. And you know, I talk about something called a minimal effective response. What is the least thing you can do that allows you to get emotional closure? And maybe for you, it is to speak to young girls that are facing this decision. Maybe for you, it is to write about this. Maybe for you, uh, it is to give your testimony and witness in church. Maybe for you, it is to get trained and, and be on a, a crisis hotline for girls that are in situations like this where you give back and use your life to make a difference. I don't know what it is for you, but you need to find out what is your minimal effective response. The least thing you can do that allows you to say, you know what, I learned from that and I did what I could. Because you can't unring the bell. He's not gonna become who you wish he had been, which is okay because you're not who you were then either. And you know that wouldn't work. You don't even want that. No. You, just, you just wish he had been different in the moment. Yes. But he wasn't. But you, listen, every situation needs a hero and you're it in this situation. You need to be the hero for yourself. You need to stand up for yourself, stand up for other girls that are in this situation. Be that voice and say, let me tell you how dumb I was thinking at the time. Yeah. Let me tell you how dumb my thinking was at the time. Share that, use that, move forward with that. And then it doesn't become a regret, it becomes one of those teachable moments in life that you use to save a whole lot of others from going down that path. But you gotta take care of yourself first. Do you agree with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. I think you need some help sorting this out. And I'm gonna make some resources available to you to sit down and help you navigate this terrain to get you to identify that minimal effective response and to get that closure. Well, Kevin is the author of Secret Regrets, and he's the creator of the website with the same name, and he's here today. Uh, he says that the website has given people uh, like you uh, an emotional outlet, an opportunity to talk about these things. Kevin, you think this has been a positive thing for people? It's been overwhelmingly positive. Um, 
you know, Jamie has, you know, shared her story and, and Kelsey too. And uh, I think we've had a lot of closure today and a lot of uh, opening doors for both of these individuals. And it just reflects a lot of what I hear back um, from people who have posted their regret on the, on the Secret Regrets website. Um, we've stopped suicides. We've uh, prevented affairs. We have um, uh, convinced people to go and get help for their addictions. It's, it's just, it's been an amazing experience to, to be able to help people like this. Are you glad you went on that site? Yes. <laughs> and, and wrote down the things that you did? Yeah. Are, are you glad that you did it? I yeah. So, I mean, it's a, it's just, it's a route. It, it, it gets you where you're, gets you where you're going. We'll be right back. Well, I want to thank all of my guests today, and a special thanks to DDC, one of the top DNA labs in the world, for their help today as well. Kevin, thank you. Uh, Kevin Hansen is the author of Secret Regrets and the creator of website secretregrets.com. Uh, i tell you something I'm glad to see on this book is it says Secret Regrets Volume 1 because I'm hoping there's going to be a Volume 2 and, and 3 because I'll tell you what, uh, these are real stories from real people, and uh, there's some thought-provoking information in here in, in the comments section. It's a, it's a thoughtful read, and I encourage it. You can get copies of Kevin's book at Amazon.com, or you can download the ebook on your Kindle, Nook, or iPad. Now, a, a portion of the proceeds from Secret Regrets books goes to help support www.reachout.com, an online support resource for people who feel they just have nowhere to turn. So thank you for making that contribution as well. If you want more information on today's show, you can go to drphil.com. You can find me on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter. Um, we've talked about a lot of things today. I, I, um, my biggest problem with secret regrets is that that means you're isolated. And when you're isolated, you, you got no... You, you got no help, no resources. Are you are you glad that you came forth with this instead of staying secret? How about you, Jamie? Are you are you guys glad that you actually came forth with this? It, it helps to not be isolated. Thanks for being here today. So. Long.